Uh, hello and welcome to our special Dungeons and Gamers Extra Life live stream podcast thing that we are doing. Uh, this is a Dungeons and Dragons game to uh, benefit uh, Extra Life, which is a charity that raises money to support Children's Miracle Network hospitals. The uh, donations that uh, people will be giving uh, to to uh, my specific page uh, will benefit the uh, Sanford Children's Hospital uh, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, uh, which several of the players are from that area. Uh, but specifically, my son, during his cancer treatment, uh, has spent a lot of time at that hospital. Um, he, 2016, he uh, had uh, brain cancer and uh, had a to be emergency lifted to that hospital and um, for like a year went through chemo, well, went through surgery and then chemo. And then even, you know, for years, he will be uh, going to that hospital for uh, scans to make sure he no longer, still no longer has cancer. Um, and the, these donations that people will be giving uh, directly benefit the, this hospital where he and kids like him uh, receive treatment for uh, serious medical issues um, from cancer to broken bones to lots of stuff. And that's kind of what we're trying to achieve today. But also, we're here to play some D&D. And we're going to start off with the Dungeon Master telling us all about this great, exciting stuff. This great, exciting stuff, like the game. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Hi, everyone. I'm Katie Quixotic. I will be running this crazy adventure, and it will be um, about as wild as you make it, really. Um, I'm excited to be here. I think this is a great cause. What's up, yo? Uh, I, I'm, uh, what, I'm a half, uh, half-elf half paladin named Rokuzin. Uh, I got two short swords, dual-wielding some swords, uh, ready for adventure, you know? I'm Bear. I'm a barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Erin. I am playing Cookie Kebler. She is a wood elf bard. She is a junior acquisitions agent with the Kebler Guild. So she travels around the land trying to find new and exotic ingredients for the, the guild to make new and cool stuff for everybody. She has a bear companion that you just met, and they travel around together and find cool stuff. I am Morthos. I am a tiefling sorcerer. Uh, Fergus and I don't get along too well. I ran into this party uh, while I was up to looking for trouble, I'd say. Uh, and we kind of got stuck together, and now I'm here. And uh, lastly, that uh, brings Fergus Boggs' uh, turn to introduce himself, played by yours truly. Hello, I am... Fergus Bog, I am the heir to the kingdom of far away. Um, half orc ranger, I believe, is is what they like to call me. Uh, I uh, I'm on a quest to get back my kingdom. Uh, there's a lot going on there, but I won't get into it right now for you folks. But uh, it's very exciting. You can hear about it later. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you what happened on our last adventure. On my way to Waterdeep, I stopped in the village of Tanaba for a bit of a rest. After sharing my stuff, the stuffed toy I won at a carnival with a small child, I encountered a half-elf warrior and a very unlikable sorcerer, and then a cookie elf with a bear. I like the bear, and the elf smells nice. Uh, some, some man was yelling... And uh, I found some people in the woods who said I could punch him. Uh, so uh, me and this uh, group I found myself with uh, brought down him and his wicked allies. So I thought, hmm, perhaps these people could be useful to get my kingdom back. So, you 
Um, you conscripted, essentially, or at least gathered everyone, uh, and they agreed to head with you to Waterdeep. Um, from where you had been, you know it was a, a little bit more than a, a four-day journey, maybe almost five, being from Tanaba. Uh, you left Red Larch yesterday. Uh, the, the journey there was uneventful. You, were, you managed to find a, a stay overnight in an inn and set off the next day on the long trek south to Waterdeep. On the first day, you watch the walk- rocky sloping hills, the valley fade into the lush greenery and distant farmland indicative of the area surrounding Golden Fields. The Golden Fields, also known as the Greenery of the North, lay two days march eastward of your current position. The presence of the land supposedly blessed by Shantea herself is clearly evident by the pastoral scenery you can spy in the distance. Along the way, you pass some foot travelers, a merchant car, a small procession of cars laden with corn and summer squash, all heading north to Red Larch. As the day drew to a close, you found a small copse of trees off the corner of a crossroads, which provided a shaded place for you to place your bedrolls uh, and a few ripe apples from the tree to complement your travel rations. Um, you've all had a, a long night's rest. You wake up refreshed. Um, you find that a lowland fog has swept in as the cool night met the rising sun. It's a cloudy day and it smells of rain. How early do you wake up? Uh, I could I could see Frigus kind of uh stirring uh pretty pretty early. I think he doesn't like to sleep too late, especially because the way he's kind of lived his life, always a little on the edge. So he's he's kind of kind of up early, especially because like he doesn't love sleeping outside. Like being a ranger, he still is like I'm I'm I got nobleness. I want to sleep in the nice bed. <laughs> nobleness. Yeah. <laughs> Nobility. Yeah. Do you think you would be spurring everyone up to get up early and get going then? No, no, I don't. I don't think he's gonna push other people. I think he's just kind of get get up and like keep like kind of work on his own stuff and and uh, mess around with that. So I'm not sure when everyone else would start uh, stirring. Is anyone a particularly late riser? Me after a long day's march. Okay, <laughs> how late do you think you'll know. sleep? Uh. I don't know, I would say like 10 a.m., you know? <laughs> okay. Pretty in there. I think Morthos prefers the night to the day, yeah. so he would sleep as long as he could comfortably. Okay. Cookie, I could see being an early riser. She, d- Even though she does travel around a lot, she definitely doesn't care for sleeping outside very much, so she probably just woke up because the sun's up, and she's like, ugh. <laughs> yeah. What about Bear? Bear's going to wake up. With the first person to get up, you know, like someone else starts moving, Bear is going to start moving. Okay. Looking for that food. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Looking for food, probably. (laughs) So Fergus, Cookie, and Bear are awake. Rukusen and Morthos are still asleep. And as you're going about your morning and engaging whatever your morning activities would be, you hear shuffling footsteps coming from a bit down the, the crossroads. And there's also sort of like a rhythmic like tapping almost sound into the ground. And after a few moments, you see uh, a woman kind of like clearing over the the long, long grass that like, waves a bit in the breeze. She's, she's human, uh, very aged uh, looking. She's dressed in simple earthen toned attire. She has a rucksack and a walking stick and a cloth fastened around her head. Uh, and as she continues on just toward the general crossroad, you um, anyone who's paying attention to her would see her kind of almost slow down a bit and, and squint, put her hand over her eyes, over at this group of people uh, under these trees. She raises her stick up in the air. Ah, are you adventurers? Addressing, in general, the three of you. Depends what you want. Maybe. <laughs> are you are you trying to intimidate, Maybe. or are you just generally no, suspicious? No, no, I'm oh, I'm okay. just like yeah. uh, I'm not going to like answer to anybody. Like somebody comes up and be like, "Hey, you are you a car mechanic?" It depends. I'm not always a car mechanic. <laughs> that's fair. Okay, that's fair. I wasn't sure with the Fergus voice. It just sounds intimidating. I'm just intimidating in general. Okay, who's yeah. asking? So <laughs> he's just a scary guy. That's fair. Bear's gonna smell her. Do you like make your way over away from the camp as a bear to walk up and smell her? Or are you gonna do it from where you're sitting? I'll walk up and smell her. 
Give her a good whiff. Okay. Doing a smell check. As smell you take jacket. a few steps forward, you see her kind of like shuffling backwards with her walking stick, and she's like, I mean you no harm. You can call off your bear. <laughs> it's like, just don't appear threatening and she bear will be okay. <laughs> so make-, <laughs> make yourself look bigger. <laughs> Her Lead knobby in. hand uh, is like clutching this walking stick, and the other one. It's like, uh, it should be fine. Like, I have 11 bar here for her. It's like, she, she'll be okay. It's like, I'll feed her something. She'll be okay. fine. Go ahead and make your, your smell. What are you looking to smell on her? I don't, well, food primarily, but like anything <laughs> weird. <laughs> okay. I just want to know what she smells like. Okay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and. Ask? First first roll of the session. <laughs> I rolled a seven for the first time and an 11 the second time. So since I get advantage, it's an 11. Mm. Mm. So you smell bread. Not as good as the bread that you smelled last time. Uh, but there's bread there. There's some cheese, some fresh fruit, some dried fruit that smells like it's been um, sugared a bit. There is also... There's another smell that's distinctly not food. It's much more earthen. Um, very like natural smelling, but not fresh. If that makes sense, like something dried. No, did <laughs> <laughs> I will remember that. Yeah, right. Uh, you just standing there in front of her, or like I guess like walking, whatever. However, your posture is as a bear, just chilling. Okay, vibing. <laughs> Are you, did you like sniff and walk back or do you smell I, sniffing? I sniffed and then I kind of, I'm like waiting to see what everybody else does. I'm just still standing there. I guess, I guess Fergus uh, goes like, uh, did you need something? Well, I was hoping to find some brave souls along the road. There's a, a journey that needs to be done and I'm just too old for it these days. What? What is it? The, the children, the children of the village, they're sick. We've asked clerics, we've asked alchemists, but no one has been able to help them. I fear they're cursed in some way. There is something mm. that we need. It's, in a way, it's not far, but in a way, it's very far away. It's a little bit dangerous. What's the danger? Are you familiar with these lands, child? Ish. <laughs> Go ahead and roll a history check. Ooh. Cookie's familiar. 19. <laughs> Cookie's familiar. She knows Cookie real knows good. everything about this <laughs> yeah. land. This actually makes a lot of sense for Cookie to be familiar yeah, with this. Yeah, since so she travels around, yeah. You travel around and Golden Fields. Uh, this is far from the actual city of Golden Fields, but... The area around that is lush farmland, and they say, as I mentioned, it's like common knowledge that it is, quote unquote, blessed by Shantea. That is what um, people, the knowledge that people have passed down, whether or not it is or isn't true. You do know that it is basically a prolific farming area, and as a baker, much of the um, like wheat and stuff, um, the materials that you might use would come from this area for various pastries. And there's been whispers, especially among those who um, like depend upon an area like this to supply their food and their, their goods for their services, that there are random portals to some sort of wild land that are so easy to happen upon that you might walk into one and never know it. Oof. So the way that she's talking about this and with this kind of like knowledge that was like lying in the back of your head that didn't really seem important until she mentioned something kind of like almost like not necessarily ominous, like she's trying to be spooky, but more just like hinting at danger. It kind of like calls this memory back to your mind as she's asking you what you know. Okay, yes. I do tend to remember there being some things about. Some things? Yes. (laughs) I I know things. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All those things that Katie just said, yeah. All those things. Okay. Yeah. Those things. Lady, get to the point. What do you need from us? This land is lush not only because of a blessing from Shantea, or maybe not for that reason at all. There are 
entryways to a wildland around here, everywhere. And the power from that land enriches the earth here. There are there are plants there and animals there that that cannot exist here. They are too fantastical for the material world. And because of that, there are things there that are very dangerous, but also very helpful. I need I need a single blossom that grows in these lands. It's very unique. You would notice it at a glance. It's pearlescent. It grows in the shade. There's a hanging blossom with a large bell and a ruffled bottom. It's called the Queen's Grace. It holds immense healing powers, such that even can lift curses. I need it. The children need it. And I know I'll die if I go for it on my own. Fergus, we should help them. Fergus kind of looks at the lady and be like, so if someone gets this flower, they'd be quite the hero, you know, well regarded amongst the people. Of course, our village isn't isn't some as big as some, but we, our children would remember for the rest of their lives, and so would their children. Everyone who came through would know. I mean, I kind of I'm on like a short term campaign going, but yeah, this should be fine. Um, <laughs> so you'll help. Yeah, us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can. I'm in. Uh, and he, I guess he, he looks, uh, first at, at Rakuzin thinking he's the more likely to agree and then kind of like slowly, uh, turns his eyes towards Morthos going like, uh, they're both still asleep (laughs) unless they're light sleepers. Oh, you're right. I'm asleep. They're still, (laughs) I I didn't know. It still works though. You can still look over and think as to what we're gonna, (laughs) what we're gonna say about it. It's not a light sleeper. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's very true. He's a he- heavy very meditator, true. yeah. So it's a reference to the previous series. Everybody should go find it. Yes. <laughs> Plug it. <laughs> YouTube.com slash Uh Yeah, then I guess... I guess... Uh, we Everyone who's awake is like... Oh. And Bear can't talk, so I guess me and Cookie are just going to be like... <laughs> fine. Yeah. We'll, we'll help. We will help you. The journey's not terribly far. Can we leave now? Uh, you're you're coming. I need to lead you to the entrance. Um. Okay. Uh. One second. All right. And let's he, go uh, wake him up. Uh. Uh. Fergus kind of gestures to Cookie to wake up. Uh. Rakuzin. <laughs> and then. Uh, and then. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't choose Bear to do so, at least. And then uh, Fer- Fergus uh, kind of uh, walks over to Morthos and kind of gives him like a l- a light kick in the side uh, to kind of God. like get up. We're gotta go. And then Cookie just kind of nudges Rokuzin and is like, Rokuzin, we need to go. There's an old woman here that desperately needs our help. Oh. <laughs> wow, I let's go. I was asleep. Come on. Jeez, okay. Come on. <laughs> All right. And I get up and just, you know, get ready, I guess. Begrudgingly, tiredly. <laughs> yeah. You you got enough sleep to get a long rest, but you it's kind of that like you woke up before your REM cycle yeah. ended and you're yeah. like kind of sore almost a little bit yeah. for a while until you kind of walk that off. 100%. Here, have a cookie to wake yourself up. Yay! <laughs> nice little starting off the day with a little sugar for breakfast, you know, like the true Perfect. American way. <laughs> get that rush in. <laughs> nice. And you you do get up more though, so are you? Hey, so uh, so Fergus kicked me. Just lightly, <laughs> not enough to have to roll damage. <laughs> uh, ugh, what's going on? What's happening right now? Uh, Fergus, what do you want? Uh, stuff's going on. You, if you want to get paid for this job, we gotta go somewhere first. <laughs> is it uh, is it on the way? Uh, depends on what path you take. Everything's on the way. I mean, we've been we've been hiking for days now, and you've been saying, "Yeah, we're going this way." And I thought, you know, payment's been pro- promised this whole time. Like, what's what's the deal? 
Waterdeep's not that far away, and I'll be honest, somebody said that there's stuff going on. You get some money at the end of this, just... If you wanna, if you wanna leave, you don't get the money from the job I got for you. So either you come with me here, or you lose out on the big score. You're paying me double, but I'll do it. <laughs> we'll negotiate the terms later. Like Morthos, there's sick kids, and they need our help desperately. Do they have the money? Just, can you please help us? We're already traveling together. <laughs> I mean, yeah, where else am I going to go at this point? <laughs> yeah, I mean, come <laughs> Why on. Why not? You do hear, like, uh, no, like, Rakuzin and Morthos now, for the first time you hear a voice saying, we, we, of course, would find some way to, to compensate you. No, I only <laughs> didn't see there. <laughs> She's still standing like... Oh, it just shocks me. Like, oh, shit. She's like Where'd 20 or from? so feet away, like still holding desperately onto her walking stick as Bear is just like in front of her. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bear. All right. Sounds just good. chilling. Who is she? <laughs> She's the woman that told us about the kids who need our help. She's going to show and us the just, way. You just believed her? Absolutely. Why would she lie about this? I mean, Morthos, if you want to roll insight. Yeah, you totally could. Uh, yeah, I don't know that I trust her. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> roll insight. Well, <laughs> I rolled a four. <laughs> so you're, you're looking at the, you're rolling insight on the old woman? Yeah. You look out at see her. See if she's lying. And you see... Um, an old woman with like a traveling scarf tied around her head. You know, she's um, her her hands are tightly clinching the walking stick in front of her, and she looks visibly frightened of bear. Um, that's what you can tell about her right now. It's um, you know, you don't see her being shifty eyed, but she's also kind of pretty pretty focused on on bear, even as she talks. She'll like look up sometimes, but she's just kind of standing there, very obviously afraid. Cookie's going to walk over and just kind of stand next to Bear, give Bear a lemon bar, be like, Bear's good. Like, you you should, no need to be afraid. She's my friend. You're not the only person I've met who's made friends with the animals. Isn't that a song? I, I feel like I'm about to break into, like, like a Disney like a part of a song. <laughs> <laughs> that, no. Thank you for a new, I don't know what song that is. Okay, anyway. You know, there are druids and rangers all over the place, and that's just a thing that yeah. they do. Um, if, if you're ready, then I can show you the way. Uh, I think yeah. so. Yeah. And, uh, were we already like mostly packed up at that point? or I'd, We pack up if we're not. I mean, there's like I've got, there's bed I've got all my stuff. stuff. Ah, yeah. We grab our bed Bear's rolls. Good. Bear's good. She's got her stuff. Okay. <laughs> All right, then you pack up camp really quick. She um, she kind of like moseys over to the shade of the tree as the, like the you can tell the sun's coming up, but it is still a cloudy day outside. So um, it's not like it's getting too, too much brighter, um, but it is a little bit warmer as the day progresses. Um, she starts walking. She leads you west off the road. Um, you walk for about an hour um, to a grove of tall weathered oak trees with low hanging branches kind of weave through each other a little bit. It's almost like protective. It's not dense like a full gate where it's difficult. You can kind of like walk and dodge through them. Um, but it's interesting how they're kind of wound around each other that way. Um, she begins to step over and under little, um, some, some of the lower hanging branches, making her way in towards the middle. Um, does everybody follow? Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Closely behind Rakuzin. Okay. <laughs> Morthos is like hugging Rakuzin's butt. <laughs> okay. Then um, after she goes over and under a few times and you all follow her in, maybe like through 10 feet or so of these like twisted branches, um, you step over the last of them and you find yourself in a small clearing. The light seems almost a little bit brighter here, remarkably. Um, it's, it's pretty mundane other than that. Um, just some grass in the area, except for there is a ring of mushrooms in the middle of this clearing. They are short, like wide-topped, just plain brown mushroom 
she turns around and waves you all in. Um, in into the mushrooms? Into the clearing. Oh. If you start to walk further towards into them, she'll stop you. Can can I scope out these mushrooms? Sure, yeah. Go ahead and make uh, either a nature or a survival check, whichever you think would be more appropriate. Yeah, I rolled 13 on nature. So you know that the common name for these is called a false parasol. They are um, they're poisonous and they're often mistaken for another very similar type of mushroom that isn't poisonous and is edible. Sure. But you notice that these do happen to be the variety that are poisonous. You also notice that they are in almost a perfect circle. Um, she sits down on the ground uh, as you all kind of make your way in and you're studying these things. And uh, she says, before you go, there are a few things you must know. Do not eat the food. Do not make any agreements with anyone. And although time may pass as it normally does here, it can be very inconsistent in this place. It might seem like you're there for minutes and you could find it to be hours or only seconds, but I will do what I can to make sure you come back to the right time. And she's sitting down and she pulls out from, um, she's got like little, like almost like sachets, sachet things on her like belt. Um, and she pulls out like two palm sized pieces of aquamarine. Um, they're natural looking and very jagged, except for in the like a very flat side of each one of those where it seems like they meet. And she puts them, those flat sides next to each other and sits them on the ground in front of her. Out of one little um, bag, she pulls some fine yellow powder and she encircles the two of them and then sprinkles the dust over the top. She picks up out of another little bag a bundle of what looks like mugwort, which is really common, sort of like sagey type uh, plant that would be pretty easy for most people to recognize. It's bundled up and it looks dried and she snaps her fingers and the end of it lights up and a subtle smoke starts to emit from it. And she starts w waving that almost over um, the two pieces together. And after just a few minutes, she blows the dust off as she's blowing the smoke over. Uh, and you see the two halves that were sort of like lying inert with the slat side facing each other can pull together for a second and then fall limp again. She waves to... Um, Probably to Cookie because you were talking to her earlier and seemed really like forthcoming and like uh, kind to her. And you're not <laughs> Nicer quite as scary. than Fergus. Yeah. yeah. Um, she waves you over and she hands you one of these pieces and she says, "This will be your only way back." What What do I do when we when it's time? Once you've found this bloom, you must return to the circle. And she points at the mushrooms. Said. It will look different on that end, but you'll be able to remember what it looks like. It's very similar, but the plants there, they are, they are very different. Okay. So what would happen if we did um, do, like, eat the food or talk or agree with anyone? I'm just wondering... Um, she says that some of the some of the food there can um, almost like make you addicted to it, but it has no nutritional value, so you could starve. Mm. Some of it will cause random effects in people. It could um, it could make you fall asleep. It could make you voraciously hungry. It could make you um, like lose the ability to discern friend from foe. Um, mm. Some of them are perfectly fine, but it's hard to say which is which. Mm. So unless you're very familiar with how to suss out plants that have weird properties then you know etc cetera, etc cetera. cookie looks over to bear and just kind of is like you can't eat anything while we're there <laughs> oh, oh no, oh. <laughs> oh, no. It's like you can't Poor eat bear. anything bear <laughs> oh, no now, keep in mind, <laughs> and this is a little bit of backstory for anyone who wasn't um, like this is from before this stream um, you have eaten fruit from the wilds before when you had that pastry yeah. at the fair. So some of them mm -hmm. are perfectly fine and you know mm -hmm. that from firsthand experience. So mm -hmm. um, if you do see something that you would want to eat or sample or whatever, then you probably should just look at it first. Right. Yeah. Examine it a bit. Yeah. Smell it. Yep. Yeah, do the smell check. The smell check. <laughs> when when uh, she said like, you have to make contact uh, when you go in, 
uh, Fergus just kind of starts like looking at people like when the teacher's like group project pick your partners and I just like start looking at Cookie and I'm like like kind of reach to to hold her hand. Oh. <laughs> you're like, you're like I'm not I'm like like reaching for her while like giving dirty looks at Morthos like not not hit, not picking you not. Wow. <laughs> Yikes! Don't worry, Morthos just grabbed on to Rakuzin. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going in. He's right behind him. Just <laughs> this is a bromance. <laughs> hey, what are you grabbing? I mean, I was what? hugging your butt before, but probably your shoulders. Wow. Just like hands on your like shoulders. Physically. Yeah. Damn. All right. I love it. Uh, so so that means I'm grabbing Cookie. Cookie grabbing Bear. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. And and then is 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 Rakuz and grabbing bear then? Is bear the middle point? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. Is bear okay with that? <laughs> <laughs> I just had a lemon bar. Feeling pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling pretty good. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So you I guess that puts Cookie in the lead then. You walk forward into the circle. She's gesturing. Yep, we walk in. Please hurry for the children. Okay. For the children. For the children. So the minute you step in, there's a rush of like cool, it's like a cool breeze, but your hair doesn't rustle. Nothing moves around. It's just like almost like this feeling of like a chill that washes over you and it fades away pretty quickly. Um, but there's, it's almost like movement as you're, you feel like you're being like propelled forward a little bit. Um, you look around and at first your vision is a bit blurred and everything kind of looks the same, but now you notice that the mushrooms seem to be taller and, and, and wider and they're red and there's white spots on them. The grass seems a bit softer, more lush. The heat that was that was um, kind of building up in the day has faded and it's almost darker here, like more like a twilight sort of time of day. You smell a little bit of honeysuckle on the wind and you find yourself in a rocky sort of curved alcove. There's overhanging trees, their leaves creak and rustle in the gentle breeze. Uh, at the mouth of the alcove, you see an elven looking figure watching a dragonborn, looks like, lying on the ground who seems to be just waking up. Hello? And I think you specifically, Belladonna, you were just walking down a trail on, on your way. Uh, wherever you were heading. And while simply walking through this sort of like forest footpath, you took a step and then suddenly the path behind you had vanished and there were rocks there. And what was daytime has turned to evening, it seems. And the trees look different than what you were used to. And you took a few steps forward and you saw this dragonborn lying sleeping on the ground. And then you hear like a, a rustling behind you, like the trees are kind of buffeted by a wind. And uh, you turn and you see a, a, a half orc and a, a half elf and a, and a bear and another elven looking figure and, and a tiefling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, do, do we want to have uh, Bella introduce herself? Yeah. Um, I'm Belladonna. I'm a high elf rogue. And that's that's all of it, actually. That's all you're getting. <laughs> that's all you need to know. That's all of it. Uh, <laughs> Bullet well, points. <laughs> well, uh, what do we Very need clean. to know about Roy? Okay, so I am a dragonborn cleric. I heal things. I stab things. Right now, my character is asleep, so I'm just taking a little nap, resting <laughs> up, you know. Got big adventures and whatnot. I might have just been on a big adventure. You don't know. I'm out doing things. <laughs> I stab, I heal, I do whatever. Okay. I breathe fire. <laughs> nice. Shit. Nice. Roy, you've been sleeping. You you went to sleep maybe kind of late. Um you were in a, a town. Um they had very, very, very good drinks. And they noticed um, you know, they they were familiar with your organization and be feeling kindly toward it and being practitioners of the same um I don't want to like give too much away, but the same faith. Uh, they just felt kindly towards you and were kind of like um, giving you their best almost. You went to sleep in a tavern uh, in a bed and you 
start to hear like footsteps and things behind you and you wake up on the ground in a bedroll in some grass next to a river. Okay, I get up and I look around and yell, okay, who's there? (laughs) Someone did this. I was in a bed. I was in a town. There was there was not a river here. I have checked for rivers multiple times before going to bed because rivers. Where am I? Who are you? Who is there? Oh, you're just dreaming. Oh, okay. Wait. <laughs> no. <laughs> why did I so easily fall for that? Who are you? And why are you tricking me? <laughs> uh, Fergus uh, hears this guy yelling and goes, Not again. <laughs> <laughs> What? Yelling guys. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. It is you from my mysterious past person who I do not... I, I'll, I'll be honest, I have no idea who you are. But you said again. Therefore, that means you might know who I am. <laughs> and I'll be honest. I might have had a few drinks last night. I might have had a few drinks throughout my life. I tend to forget <laughs> things. Did you bring me out here? Did she bring me out here? Why am I here? <laughs> mm. I have no idea who you are, how you got here, or who she is. Honestly, I'm like 30% sure why I even like came here, but like, do you need help? Like, I'm already doing one thing. What's going on? I have a follow-up question. Where is here? Honestly, I wasn't paying too much attention. I heard the end goal was pretty dope. (laughs) Uh, so the middle part I'm still working on. Anybody else want to help this guy? We're we're going to get a flower because an old lady needs it to save some kids that are all sick. That's that's why we're here right now. Okay, so you said, sir, Mr. Orkman, that the end goal was, quote, dope. But you, <laughs> sir, Mr. Elf Paladin Man, said your end goal was a flower. Now- well, it's to save some kids. That's pretty dope. All right. We're on a quest. Yeah. Helping the helping the children is good. That it's is pretty, indeed it's pretty dope. dope as we know. However, yeah. how does the flower do that? I mean, we didn't ask a lot of questions. We just kind of trusted her. Probably should have, shouldn't have, but you know, we we did. I think she needs it to make like an antidote of some kind yeah. for the children. Mm-hmm. You people just went along with this person <laughs> that you've never met before? Okay, so you yes. kind of a running theme. I did. It's not the first time this has happened. What is wrong with you people? <laughs> She's an old lady. What's she going to do? Why would she lie about that? Do you know how often sorceresses just bear? disguise themselves <laughs> as old bear. ladies? Like, oh, yeah, here you go. Do the thing I'm telling you to do. Like, are you trying to be murdered? I mean, to be fair, last time we followed along with somebody, they turned out to be the the, the bad guys. So, oh, like, it's, perfect. we probably Wonderful. should have learned. So you're lesson, one for one, but... just trusting the bad guy. Yeah, I tread my own trail last time, but I've been on many adventures, and I know as a rule, you don't get betrayed twice in a row. <laughs> That's how these things go. <laughs> This is now, a freebie. As a fellow adventurer, I do Are agree with new? that. <laughs> You're new here. <laughs> well, yes, here I am. I haven't been to this place. I'm looking for a. Fl- we're looking for a flower. Do you? Do you have flowers? As you're having this conversation and kind of like. Not necessarily arguing back and forth, but trying to figure <laughs> out what the hell's going on. Um, Bella Don, I need you to make a perception check for me. I rolled an 11. Okay. They're all talking. You think that they have maybe perhaps made a terrible decision based on what you've just said to them. And as the conversation is kind of like, uh, you're like in the middle, so you're almost like tennis matching between Roy and Fergus and Cookie. Um, There's like this slight rustling behind you. And you, you noticed when you had kind of crept out to the edge and had seen the sleeping figure that the edges of this sort of like rocky area were lined with cactus. And you feel something brush up against your leg. Um, Almost, almost like a cat. And you look down and there is this green plant cat who is just rubbed 
the side of its shoulder against your leg. And if they had been trying to hurt you, they maybe would have. But because of the way that they kind of like nuzzled up to your foot, it the spines just kind of rolled over the, the leather of your boot. After that one kind of like rubs itself against you and sits down and makes this what would almost be a purring noise, perhaps, but maybe like a little bit gargly. Um, a few more kind of creep out from the cactus that had been boarding this area. And you all see, well, not anyone inside the alcove, but Belladonna and Roy, you see four cactus cats. Just kind They're of walk so out. They're so cute. Yeah. Are they adorable <laughs> or terrifying? I can't. <laughs> They're adorable. <laughs> One of them walks a little too close to Bear. And she's just going to smack it. <laughs> wow. um, go ahead and make an attack roll. Oh, my God. I rolled a 10 with Bear Claws, which does six slashing damage. If it hit. If it hit. So you go to slash at this creature, and as uh, it's kind of like sitting there, and it's it's got its paw, and it's rubbing it on its spines. It looks up at you with these purple eyes and you swipe at it and the spine <laughs> stiffen for a moment. And as you go to scratch at it, you instead impale um, the edge, like the soft part of your, your um, like pad, your foot pad on these. And you take Oof. instant karma. <laughs> One point of damage. Mm. Oh. Katie's like, leave my cute. Cactus cats alone. <laughs> uh, and it kind of uh, stiffens up and does the arch back thing that a cat does. And it uh, like backs up and around the corner from you. And now now the four of them all look a little bit more alarmed. Backs um, like arched. Are these the plants you're looking for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you get a description no. of the plant? It's a tall flower. That's like hanging, that kind of hangs down, and it's kind of like bell-shaped, and it's called the Queen... Queen's Grace. Queen's Grace, Grace I know that yeah. much. It's like opalescent. So and it's it not cat-shaped. And it grows cat in the shade, shape. yeah. I, I think she would have mentioned if the plant was a cat, uh, but... Yeah, this doesn't look like that. <laughs> so uh, no. I, yeah, I guess Fergus kind of looks at it to see if like maybe the Queen's Grace might be growing off of it as well, like a elaborate ruse <laughs> just just little cactus shape or cat shaped it's a cat shaped creature that looks like bits of cactus and and then oh, uh and green and Fergus spiny. just kind of goes like i i don't think that's what we want and after what happened to the bear i suggest we leave it alone i'm not touching that thing i'm gonna try to pet it Okay, the the one that had kind of like rubbed itself up against you at first is still looking at Bear like um, like with its back a little arched and it's kind of like taking a few steps back. Go ahead and make an animal, animal handling check. I rolled a 14. Nice, yeah. So you, you're able to reach down and the spines don't completely cover it. They're, um, they're like, they're spaced out a bit. So you're able to kind of like run your fingers along a safe um, part on like the top of its head and it, kind of like wiggles its head back and forth and looks a little bit more pleased and kind of almost like hides behind your foot. This is mine. <laughs> oh, don't touch it. <laughs> what are you, you going to name it? I haven't decided. Okay. Well, let, it, let us know when you do. My name's Rakuzin, by the way. Nice to meet you. <laughs> no, no, nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Belladonna. <laughs> and I am Roy, Roy Flamebringer. Nice to meet you. I'm nice Cookie. Nice to meet this you, Cookie. This is Bear. Nice Roar. to meet you, Bear. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, guess, I guess at the point, like, everybody else has said their name, I'd be like, my name's Fergus. Are, are, do you guys have a purpose here? Nope. <laughs> well, I was taking a nap, and I woke <laughs> up here, so you tell me, do I have a purpose here? <laughs> Something's at work. <laughs> hey, t- do you have a way out of this place that we're in? I don't know where we are. Okay, I'll tell you what. 
uh, Roy for sure. Bella seems less concerned about stuff, but <laughs> tell you what, if you guys help us find this flower, we've got a way out of here. We can come with us. Well, considering that I had no idea I was trapped somewhere, I don't seem like I have much of a choice. So, <laughs> Mr. Orkman, I shall accept your invitation. Fergus. My name's Fergus. Fergus. Bog. Remember the name. I, Bog. I, it'll, I prefer it'll be Mr. important. Orkman. Senior Bog. Got it. <laughs> um, so, the other three of these little, like, cat-like figures seem to kind of, like, almost crawl back into the the bits of cactus that are out there and like it's it's unclear whether they disappear or whether they just kind of become part of it but they kind of rustle in and you don't see them anymore and then cookie said she's like oh they were so cute i wanted to be your friend you could have you could have animal handled it too but I didn't. Animal handled it. Was too it, late. Otherwise known as petting. <laughs> there was like six of them, right? Four. Four. It was a, it was a number think. greater than one. One of them at least was pretty pissed. Bear animal handled. So the rest of the cats uh, slink back away. These cactus cats. And this this cactus cat, by the way, is from Mage Hand Press's Fantastical Feline. So if you don't have that, there are a lot of very cute and also some very disturbing cats in there. And this is <laughs> one of the very cute ones. Um, so then there's the one that's kind of sticking by Belladonna's side. And everyone, go ahead and make me a perception check. This is the first thing I've ruled. Including Bear with advantage. Ooh, it's a smelly one. Uh, Fergus rolled a 12. I roll Roku's and rolled a five. Orthos rolled a twenty. Natural. Whoa! I rolled a nineteen. Oh my god! Wow. Bear rolled an eight. <laughs> Cookie rolled a thirteen. Belladonna rolled a fifteen. Okay, so Roy, Morthos for sure, um, and Belladonna. Uh, you don't see anything, but you do hear a a like almost a humming sound, and um. You kind of look around you, and although you can't see anything, the sound does seem to be it's a little bit di- more difficult for you to tell Roy because it just sounds kind of far away from you and, and in the general area of the party, but especially Morthos, who is very near it, um, kind of like to the side of where the, these five of you are standing in the alcove and Belladonna is behind you in that so- same area. Um, you hear this kind of like like quick buzzing sound almost, or maybe it's like a flapping of wings. And I need... Morthos, Cusin, and Cookie to go ahead and make me wisdom saves. Oh. Morthos rolled a 16. Cookie also ro- rolled a 16. Nice. Uh, Roku's rolled a 14. So the three of you, um, you feel almost like this like tingling sensation kind of like run down your spine and there was something that was threatening to to like pull it almost like your very being, not in not in like a mental way, in a very physical way. Like you felt like almost like compressed for just a moment. Um, but you recognizing that this is something that's not supposed to happen or that doesn't feel normal to you, you're able to overcome uh whatever it was that was going to happen. Uh, awesome. Did anyone else feel that? Feel yeah. what? This there was this noise, and it was like this humming sound, and then this pulling feeling, uh, kind of that way. Le- Do you have to fart? Uh, I have that when I have to. Is that what you're feeling? <laughs> what? No. I heard something, no one, but I didn't no one, feel no anything. No one else felt anything. Heard something? You heard something, Roy? I heard something, but I felt nothing. I had a strange feeling as well. Yeah. So I, I get what you're saying. I say we go check it out in that direction. I guess I got a bad feeling about this. I don't Fergus, know. Fergus didn't hurt or feel <laughs> feel anything, so he's just kind of looking around like, what? I What's still trust Morthos, though. I say we should go in that direction where he felt <laughs> really? it. Well, I'm not saying yeah. let's go over there. I'm just, I, that's my, my, uh, we got these weird cats. Theory. We got this, I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, not weird. <laughs> Very cute. Hmm. Got these cactus cats. They are quite cute. It's stabbed bear. Mm, they're the best. Well, 
Maybe well, bear shouldn't have tried to there. attack it. Yeah, yeah to, to be like, fair, bear, bear did didn't start it. It's all yeah. in my it was business. Just defending it. So. That's a that's a good. Point, yeah. <laughs> the um the almost like buzzing flapping sound that the the couple of you heard seems to like flutter away almost, and um you hear you hear this like creaking of branches and like rustling of leaves and. Um, the, the sort of like lake or not lake, excuse me, the river that's out maybe like 20 feet away from the, the mouth of this little alcove, um, is like a gentle, gentle river. And, um, there's like general forest animal noises and you're not on, uh, you're not on like an elevated place where you're on like a mountainside or anything, but you get the sense just based on the volume of the rustling of trees and the, the sort of like animal natural sounds that, you're in a pretty dense forest, and on the other bank of this river, you can see that there's pretty much trees as far as you can possibly see. Jesus. Uh, I mean, I guess Fergus is just kind of like walking, looking for the 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 queen's uh, grace. Like uh, he he wasn't thrown off for this, so he's he's just kind of like, oh, here's trees. Maybe it's over here. Maybe okay. It's kind of looking. So you take a step out of the alcove and you notice for the first time what um, Roy and Belladonna would have already seen is that to kind of like the right as you're walking out, uh, this this rocky kind of structure extends to the edge of the, the riverbank. So there's almost like a worn path under your feet that heads left along the side of the river. Okay, so go that way. Okay. Is that um, the Fergus- same direction as that pulling? Um, no, it, I mean, like you are standing kind of like on the right side of, if you were to like, of this is like alcove. almost like circular. Yeah, yeah. And you guys were kind of like in the bottom right co- quadrant. So there was vaguely like a pull to your left, but he went out and is just turning left and you okay. so, felt something like almost very presently next to you. Okay. So I have a suggestion for the group. We have two options. We can follow the river or follow the sound, because from where I'm now standing, there is nothing but forest everywhere. I have my little makeshift bed that I woke up in. That's nice and all, but I'd rather not stay here. We can follow the buzzing. You said you felt a pulling. That's the only sense of like direction that we have, or survival instinct. We can follow the river, and the river would lead maybe somewhere. Who knows? The river is flowing the same direction, actually. I I yeah, the I say we follow the river. Yeah, Fer- Fergus didn't feel anything. He's uh, he's just like I'm gonna I'm going to follow the river, especially because like I think water sources are more likely to have foliage nearby. Easier not to get lost too. We can come I back do. that way. That's true. That's true. Okay. Um, plus, plus, maybe it leads to a swamp. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Do huh. rivers lead to swamps? Water's got to... St- swamps equal water. Water's got to come from somewhere. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Swamps <laughs> equal water. Flawless logic. <laughs> Flawless. So um, while there is, like, obviously kind of like a tread path, it's not, like, paved. There's not, like, lampposts or anything like that. The The edge of where you're at, like, the bank down to um, like this sort of like rocky alcove and the sort of like rocky structure that lines the side of it It is about 20 feet wide. So you don't necessarily have to march in a line, but what's your general marching order? Um, If you're two by two or even three by three, that's fine. I just kind of need to know who's kind of towards the front and the middle and the back. I I think I'm in the front, at least like, like even if someone's right behind me, I'm, I'm trying to keep at least a few paces of fret ahead. Um, just kind of like, I'm in the lead. Gotcha. Okay. Of course. <laughs> I'd want to be in the back. I imagine Morthos is probably going to be in the back <laughs> while following me. I think so. I'm still hugging. Yeah. Hugging <laughs> Rakuzin, basically, like right behind him. Like, he's my yeah. shield. Not physically, but. <laughs> Don't leave me. <laughs> well, like, you're my blue shield, I think, is the way I'm thinking of it. Yeah, right? that's fair. <laughs> And I kind of have come to expect that, so yeah, it's like that's our that's our relationship now. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Fine. I could see um, Cookie being in the middle. What about you, Bear? I'm just following Cookie. <laughs> Roar. 
Okay. I'll probably <laughs> either be like in the middle or closer to the front, somewhere okay. around that area. All right. So Belladonna's in the way back, though. Dead last. Okay. So I'm um, <laughs> as I'm just like constantly checking over my shoulder too, just like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really, you should. <laughs> that's fair. And I'm carrying my little kitty cat. Oh, you're carrying. You're I'm carrying right. it. Oh yeah, oh. she's coming. And the with me. spikes not like like on your shoulder. I think that's only if you're mean to it. They're the spines are kind of like long. They're like here. The I cat have claws cat right here. Um, it's it's less like they retract wow. and more like they are um like long and will lay down. Mm. Um, so when she Porcupine. goes down to pick it up, they kind of like flatten it against them. Interesting. Okay. So, yeah, as long as I, her name is Claudia. Um, as long as <laughs> yes, <laughs> she's Hell yeah. okay Thanks. with being picked up and coming along with me and being my little That's bud, great. doesn't seem to resist when you reach down and, and pick wonderful. Her up. It's my um, baby. So you um, you see this this river? It's probably about fifteen to twenty feet wide. It looks like it's slow moving, um, but there's obviously like life teeming in there. There's um, like dark shadows and things that look like fish and stuff. Not dark, not like scary dark shadows, like. Like what you would see is like a fish under the water and like algae and seaweed and stuff um, kind of like waving back and forth as it flows down. Um, you you see this kind of like footpath almost like stretching out for basically to the end of your vision following the right side of this road. There um, are trees littering either side of it. The This like rocky structure kind of like darts into it, narrows it down a little bit here and there. But it doesn't seem to have any like immediately present dangers, uh, like no other cactus cats in the road or anything like that. Um, so you take off. Um, after walking for maybe like 10 or 15 minutes, there is this sort of like subtle, not like a hissing sound, but like a breeze almost that's like whistling between um, like closely knit branches. And I need everyone that's in the front and the middle of the party to make a wisdom save for me. Uh, your boy got a three. That is Oof. a crit one. Ooh, Ooh I got a five. Crit. With a crit. <laughs> yeah, you got, two crit fails. We both got ones. <laughs> Cookie yeah. got a seven. Oof. Hey, better than one. Yeah. A bear rolled a three. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Wow. Okay. So, Rakuzin... Morthos and Belladonna, you see the group walking ahead of you. Um, you hear this kind of like noise that again sounds like the whistling of like wind between branches or into a tree. And all of them stop moving and just start looking around themselves like in wonderment all of a sudden. Oh, geez. Um, they're not speaking necessarily. They might be making like noises like, wow. But it just looks like all of a sudden they're taking in their surroundings and it's massively impressive. You have walked into, the, the, those of you who failed, all of you, walked into <laughs> a euphoric mist. Ooh. You are currently having the best time of your life. The colors around you are <laughs> vivid. There are figures of things dancing in front of your face. Wow. And you are just enjoying every minute of it. You barely are even really able to pay attention to who is around you. Pretty light. Ah, the average Tuesday night. <laughs> yeah, right? I've been there before. <laughs> hey, are, are you guys okay? What's what's happening? <laughs> Don't you see it? This no. <laughs> what are you talking about? Sparkles. Beautiful. <laughs> Sparkles? Huh. Do I have like smelling salts or anything in my... <laughs> is that the sort of thing that you would carry around? <laughs> I mean, Mira's gonna lay on the ground and just roll around on it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it's I don't so know pretty. what's wrong with them. Oh. I, huh? It's like being drunk without the alcohol. It saves so much money. <laughs> <laughs> if only. Um, go ahead and make a perception check, Rakuzin, or anyone who wants to kind of like look around and try to figure out what's going on. And if you would have something like smelling salts on you or like a, po a potent herb or whatever, Belladonna, that's something that you could easily have picked up in your travels. Rakuzin rolled a 13. I rolled an 11. Should I also? 
I don't know. Are you going to look if around and try to figure out what's, what's wrong happening. with yeah. these guys? <laughs> uh, if you're curious as to why Maybe all you four of them just stopped and are like, whoa. <laughs> I was thinking about trying to like snap them out of it with thaumaturgy, with like a big boom, just like mm. between them. Okay. Um, Recusin, you're kind of like, hey, what's going on, guys? And and you, you heard the sound. Everyone heard it, but they seemed to be the only ones who didn't really pay attention to it. The three of you in the back obviously when they all stopped moving kind of took notice of what was going on and as you're looking around you you see um there's like there's like a craggy opening uh in the side of this uh like rock structure and although you don't really necessarily see any like colored mist like billowing out of it or anything you can see the like weathered edges of where like wind passes through something and like wears it down over time. So there's like a smooth part of this where everything else is like rocky and craggy. Hmm. And then Morthos, if you would like to, what do you do with thaumaturgy to try to snap them out of it? Um, I think I'm going to go with causing uh, the ground to shake uh, kind of between them under their feet. So if there's a chance like that it kind of turns it into a bad trip, I guess, if, if it doesn't <laughs> snap them out. Okay. All right. So Oh, that sounds mean. Yeah. The four of you that are experiencing this euphoria, I would like you to go ahead and make like just a general wisdom check. Just press wisdom, not a save. They rolled Ooh. fifteen. I, I guess rolled, rolled fourteen. Cookie got twenty one. Yikes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, the the all four or all three of you, except for Roy, the the ground under you under you starts shaking, and you're not sure why, but it feels like whatever is going on is bad, and you should probably move. Maybe Roy, all of a sudden, like it's like the bad trip sort of thing. Like, um, you get really scared. These colors start to kind of overwhelm your senses, and you have this like incredible urge to just take off running in front of you all right i i fear the pink everything is pink why is everything pink run forward got it okay (laughs) um so you all see roy take off running and the rest of you kind of get this like sense that you need to move from where you are but the direction that you go is like your choice why why is roy roy why are you running away (laughs) come on why are you pink I'm I'm not <laughs> so confused. Well, with Roy behind me and he takes off running, um, and I'm definitely like half out of it. Seeing someone run behind me, I think I'm gonna also run forward, assuming that's they're running away from something. So I'm like, uh, I so I run forward as well. Okay. I think Cookie would do the same. She would be like, "Whoa, everyone's running! Let's go!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna sprint okay. after them. Yeah, uh, what's Fair up to? So, which direction did you run? Just forward. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll I'll get up. I'll go up too. I'll skip. <laughs> I'll do a bear skip. skip. <laughs> okay. Bear skip. <laughs> um, Belladonna, as you run forward, and I'll actually give you a moment, uh, Rakuzin. You noticed that thing? Did you mention it to anyone? No. Not really. <laughs> okay. It doesn't seem like, I don't know, the the way you described it seems kind of just like, doesn't look, I, un, unless I really know about euphoric mist, which maybe I do, I don't know, but no. otherwise it's like, it looks like a smooth part on the rock, like, I, I don't know, seems like an mm-hmm. opening, I'm like, yeah. okay, Looks happens fair. on mountains. <laughs> um, as you run sometimes. forward, then Belladonna, you also need to make a uh, wisdom save. I rolled a 12. I think that's actually fine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you (laughs) run forward and there's this like, there's like this aroma that has like a weird sort of like dried herb almost scent to it. But there's something like bitter underlying that. Do you have what? What were you going to ask? I was going to ask if I have a water skin. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, of course. I think like every adventurer's pack comes with a water skin, so right. you should unless you got rid of it for some reason. So my aim is to try to catch up with Roy and splash water in his face. Okay. Um yeah, so that's easy enough for you to do. You're you're a quick mover. Um so 
using the water from your water skin. Roy, you're kind of running. You're you're not necessarily running at like max speed and eventually <laughs> like the, the, the yeah, the, the <laughs> fear kind of like starts to subside as you get away from that area. So you're kind of like moving still, but not necessarily like at a dead sprint or whatever. And the elven uh, person, actually she introduced herself. So Billadon is running up to you and splashes some water in your face. And all, all of you, as you start to get away, the other three of you, this like weird feeling of euphoria kind of like subsides after maybe like 10 or 20 feet. Um, Roy, it had lasted a little bit longer. Uh, and so you get that splash in the face. Hughes and Amorthos, are you still just kind of like standing and watching everyone run away? What are you doing? Well, I was going to at least like kind of jog after them to keep up. I don't want to like lose them, you know? Okay. I started right. laughing under my breath a little bit, like, <laughs> uh, but trying to quickly keep catch up to Rakuzin as he runs away from me. Okay, you two make wisdom saves as well then. 18. Okay. Five. <laughs> yeah, let's see how this plays out. Uh, so Rakuzin starts kind of jogging forward, and Morthos, you get your you get your little chuckle in, and you start to go following after him. And um, as you kind of like pass the sort of area where they had been seeing before, you get the same sort of scent that Belladonna that I described to her earlier. Uh, and as you're smelling that, Rakuzin just stops dead in his tracks. Uh, Rakuzin, let's go! Come on, we got to catch up. But that tree's so pretty, Rakuza, and it's just like it's overwhelming you with the beauty of the nature in this area. Mm. So I, I'm okay. Yeah, now I'm mm. in the same place where they. <laughs> so I just start doing the exact same thing of the whoa. I see what they were talking about. It's amazing. <laughs> it's crazy. Look at all these colors. What tree? What are you talking about? I don't you see it? It's so beautiful. <laughs> He's pointing at a real tree, but it's just like. No, it's just no. a tree. Just is a tree. A, we're yeah. surrounded by trees. It's a forest. <laughs> that one right there is the most beautiful tree I've ever seen in my life. The tree of destiny. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Well, yeah, it's a nice tree. Uh, and I, I'm gonna get behind him and like start pushing him and say, "Let's go. We gotta catch up. Like we got we got places to be." Yearning for the yeah, tree. Yeah, I see the tree. I get <laughs> it. Fun. I get it. <laughs> but I all yearn for follow. the tree. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Roy, this water splashes in your face and and this like this mixture of emotions that you had just experienced kind of like fades away a little bit as you take in the actual scene around you as everyone's kind of standing in a scattered group around you and you see Morthos and Rakuzin kind of like bringing up the rear and um, you're looking at Belladonna who's standing there having just splashed water in your face. Why did you splash water in my face? <laughs> Are are you are you back to normal? Are you good? Was I ever not normal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep you, you hydrated. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like since we're by a river, it would be easy for me to get hydrated, but uh Yeah, but you hmm. you know, you were a little distracted by something, so I just wanted to help you out. Well, I appreciate you. <laughs> Fer Fergus is good now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other three of you, as you kind of like jogged forward following him, you made it like maybe 10 or 15 feet and the feelings kind of subsided and your senses came back to you. So you're all fine now. Except for like, and Rikusen will uh, also regain himself as he kind of moves out of that area. Uh, Frigus kind of uh, stand, like pauses and lets everybody kind of catch up and then and then we'll be like, hey, we, we good to keep going? <laughs> What just happened? I guess. <laughs> Roy, do you know that you just ran off like for for I no, no reason? I what you're talking about. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, that was I was just weird. walking along the river and then I got water in my face. <laughs> Did any of you guys t see this tree that Rakuzin likes? I'll never forget. Which, tree. which one? There are many trees. <laughs> I don't know which one. He's <laughs> just pointing at it. We're in a forest. I don't know. He loved this tree. I just it. remember seeing like colors I've never seen before and just feeling like the most happiest I've ever felt in my life. Wow. You, you, you can kiss the tree on the way back. We got to find this flower first. <laughs> okay. All right. Well. And uh, as you're saying that, you hear a, a voice from behind where all of you are kind of like standing in this circle talking. It's it's ahead of you on the trail, um, like the direction that you were going and it says, Stop, you will go no further. Huh. Is that that same lady? 
No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Listen, I'm not a voice actor. Okay. <laughs> I have a lady voice. This one is a little bit more masculine, but it does have like a high pitch to it. Mm. Um, and you you turn around to see a gnome standing in front of you. Mm. Anyone? Hello. Who looks? Oh. Furnace. <laughs> oh no. Gnome, hello, me. I am Nebulous. Do you not know who I am? The Supreme Scion of Thaumaturgy. Yeah, I'm gonna get up there and smell that. <laughs> smell okay. check. I like this bear. Bear was not listening to any of that and just no, nah, I'm gonna get up there and smell that. All right, go ahead and make your um, go ahead and make your your perception checks yet. Oh, no. Wolf. Oh what? I rolled a zero. Well, smell, so wow. I roll again. And then oh. a fourteen. Okay. <laughs> Um, as you take a couple of steps forward, you get like a whiff of un- unclean clothes, like somebody who hasn't necessarily like washed their clothes or maybe taken a bath in a while. Ooh. And um, um, you smell like maybe a little bit of food on him, but it's like dry rationy stuff, nothing super great. But he does kind of have like like a like a sulfury smell, like like not like rotten egg sulfur, like. In real world terms, I don't know how else to describe like fireworks sulfur other than by saying fireworks, but well, I guess fireworks exist actually. So yeah. kind of like <laughs> the same smell that, which we established last time when there were fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like a fireworks kind of smell to it. Uh, Fergus uh, goes, uh, we are on a quest to help sick children. Why are you stopping us? Um, he he brandishes a wand and he points it to his throat and he says in this loud, booming voice, "Fear me, mortals." <laughs> I mean, I, I I don't. I'm sorry. I'm gonna saunter up to him. I'm gonna swing my hips all ladylike. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, is that how you do it? Yeah. That's, That's how, how the do ladies it do it. This is how we do it. Uh, <laughs> okay. And uh, I'm gonna try to. I'm I'm not a bard, so I can't do anything like super fancy, but I am gonna try to like persuade him to to be my friend. Like are hey. you are you rolling seduction? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you walk up to him, you got like the hip sway going on. What yeah. do you, what do you say to him uh to try to like make him feel uh affable towards you? Affable? Amiable towards you. Um <laughs> Well, Darian's not great at talking, okay? okay <laughs> so okay. we're just gonna... Uh, you can give me, like, the general impression that you don't yeah, have to with the specific so, words. Uh, sh- Bella basically just wants him to to chill. Like, we mean you no harm. Like, we're here with a purpose. I'm a hottie. Why aren't you just chilling with me? I'm a hottie with, with a body, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vibe, okay, is bro. she going? Um, is she going to go full on like seductress style with it? Is there like a bit of like a uh, like walking, like sauntering up, and then kind of like um, the low bend over and like talk to him, kind of yeah. like that yep. sort of thing? Okay, oh, I drop this. Can you help me? <laughs> yep. <pick it> <laughs> bend and snap. Um, go ahead and make a persuasion <laughs> roll for me. <laughs> oh my god! I rolled a sixteen. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, no, man. Nice, nice Ben snap. Yeah. <laughs> ben. It's all in the back. <laughs> oh, like he's so he's got this like as you're walking up closer, like um, he has this sort of like arrogant like body posture. The look on his face is like he's even leaning his head back. So even though every single one of you are taller than him, he's like looking down his nose at you. And the minute you kind of like wow. bend over and are like. You know, there's no need. There's no need for this. We're not in your way. You kind of see the like very stereotypical like Bugs Bunny cartoon like melt lean forward. <laughs> He's like, that's true. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> so we are looking for a plant, a very specific plant, and you seem pretty familiar with this place. So is there a way you could help us with that? Well, I know everything about this place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start twirling my hair and getting all flirty. Like, oh, wonderful. So you, you can help us? I, uh, <laughs> what plant are you looking for? It's called, what is it called? 
Uh, we're looking for Queen's, the Queen's Grace. We're looking for something called the Queen's Grace. It grows in the shade. <laughs> <laughs> Plants have lots of names. What does it look like? I would describe what it has been described to me as. <laughs> That's good. I That's like good. that. A lot going on. <laughs> it's a cheat right there. Um, she described this pearlescent bell-shaped flower with a roughly bottom. It says, oh, I think there's something like that. It grows, uh, grows along rivers. Likes to grow under trees. Maybe it was mine. I've tree. seen them around. For, for I guess, kind of like looks at river, looks at a tree, looks in the middle. You don't see any around you. Yeah. <laughs> Not that easy. You might just have to to wander around and see if you find one by this river, maybe. So following this river, I could likely find one? Oh, yeah. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to kiss the top of his head and then walk away. Oh, he's like, oh, his whole cute. face turns red. And he just kind of like, there's like a, there's like roots sticking out of the ground from like where a tree has like protruded up and gone back down. And he just kind of like falls over, like sits down on the stump with his like elbow on his knee. And it's just like. <sighs> <laughs> wow, this whole mood shifted so fast. <laughs> he came out and was like yelling. Um, as, as. Bella kind of like walks around him like Fergus kind of just follows in in suit around the guy as as he's kind of mesmerized by her, mm-hmm. I guess. <laughs> just kind of like, Impressive. we're with her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like somebody got by the VIP ropes and we're all just kind of rushing by before the bouncer notices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so you're able to kind of skirt by. He doesn't even like look behind him. He just looks like... Um, like you all just make your way and, and he's kind of like off in his own little world now. Um, so you continue down the path. Um, you see that the the water lilies, the density of them kind of like um, like change over time and there's there's reeds mixing in with them at the edges of the banks. But you still haven't seen any of the plants that have been described to you after you've walked for about another like 10 minutes or so. And um, there's there's like a curve that you've been coming up to. And as you sort of round the bend where this big, um, one of those like almost like a willow tree, but not the weeping willow style, the ones that are a little bit taller, um, has kind of like, it has blocked your view of a little bit of the curve. Um, you make your way around the other end and on the ground by the water is this massive flower, maybe like five foot in um, like diameter, just this big rolling pink. They look so soft petals. And lying down, sleeping in the middle of it, is this absolutely beautiful woman. Um, she's got this like uh, sun-kissed, like golden skin, and these uh, freckles, and this like just absolutely scarlet red hair that like falls around her in these like soft waves. And her hair is in fact so long that it almost like seems to envelop her body, and she's just like almost like wreathed and clothed in it, and she's just there sleeping. It's probably about like it's like right at the edge of the water, maybe like five, maybe ten feet away from the the path. It's not like it's not the flower we're looking for, right? Like the one she described no. wasn't that big. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, this cool. is just a wild place with lots of flowers and stuff. Is she just lots chilling? It's like She's just sleeping. Oh, okay. Well, uh, right. no, I don't want to wake her up. <laughs> <laughs> I want to disturb her. It's fine. So we're gonna mm-hmm. sneak by. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. I'm not good at that, but <laughs> I can try. I'm also not good at that. <laughs> clink, 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 clink. Yeah, <laughs> it's real noisy. If you're all going to kind of like stop and take notice and try to like tiptoe by, you can definitely make stealth checks. Yeah, I would do that. Does she uh, look yeah, evil? I also don't want to wake up the sleeping woman. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess I guess uh, Fergus takes a good look at her and sees if there's anything like notable. Like, is this... Somebody I, he should care about. Bear's Girl gonna walk 16. up to her. She doesn't look like she's distressed in any way. She looks like she's sleeping peacefully. What do you do when you walk up to her, Bear? Uh, cookie rolled a 20, by the way. Okay. As usual, you know, I'm gonna smell her a little bit. And if she doesn't move, I'm, <laughs> I'll probably poke her. Okay. Go ahead. Just kind of like, um, make your perception checks for me. Yeah. As you. 
A 13 and a 10, so a 13 for my sniff. You do your initial, like, sniffing, and you smell... It's, it's almost like you've just buried your nose in um, a bunch of flowers, and you get that almost, like, tickly pollen sort of um, <laughs> scent. Um, just, a, just a really heavy floral scent, but, yeah, a little tickly, like you got a bunch of pollen in your nose when you inhaled. And, and as you're sniffing, her eyes kind of like flutter open and, and she looks over at you and she reaches out with her hand. Okay. I'm going to lick it. <laughs> oh. Okay. As you lick it. Um, as you lick it. Uh, the, the hand that you licked almost kind of like stretches out a little bit longer than what it should. Uh and Oof. the other arm reaches up and kind of like tendralizes as well. And Ooh. they reach out to grab you. Uh, oh, no. Here. Oh, no. I'm going to back the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, go ahead and make either uh, an athletics or, or no, it's not athletics for this. It. It's um, <laughs> you're making a strength check or a, yeah, a strength check. Oh, or well. what is it called? A uh, Athle- no, it is athletics. It is athletics. Okay. Is it against being grappled? Aerobatics? Is that acrobatics? I mean, sorry. It's athletics or acrobatics? Yeah, is- it's athletics at this particular juncture. Okay. 15. Okay. So she reaches out with you, re- towards you with these, and they start to kind of like almost wind their way around your legs and like your front legs, because you your all of yours are legs, all of your appendages. <laughs> um, and as she starts to kind of like curl around, you're able to back up quickly enough and kind of like yank your your legs out from these tendrils. And the expression on her face never changes. She looks really peaceful and serene as she's looking around, kind of at all of you now. I'm gonna the- give her like a really loud growl because I didn't like that. So can I do like an intimidation? Yeah, of course, of course. Ten. Damn it. <laughs> okay. Um, the expression on her face doesn't change, but you see the kind of like tendrils shrink back into hands. Um, and she's kind of like sitting up, propped up on these hands now, kind of looking out at all of you. Uh, Fergus was already like checking out the the lady as, as Bear did this. And so he checking saw this going out. down. Yeah. And he's like, whoa, whoa, what are you? What are you doing to the the lady? Um, she just kind of looks at you. Go ahead and make um, either. Well, you said nature and survival were the same. Go ahead and make a nature check for me. I got a nine. Roll nine. low today. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's, I don't know what this is. This just this lady is just kind of weird, right? Like, that's rough. She doesn't seem to be coming after any of you. And she's not responding anyway. Mm-mm. It's almost like the expression on her face is like locked into place. Like, you know, sometimes like even people who train their facial expressions, there's like the skin moves sometimes, even if like the eyebrow doesn't actually move. There's nothing. She's like a fly trap. Maybe. Ooh, I can see. That. Don't okay. touch that. Fer- Fergus uh, looks at Cookie and are like, y- you might. I don't know what this lady's deal is, but you might want to get. Bear away from them. Yeah, Cookie just runs up to Bear and is like, all right, let's go. This is not a good thing. Let's Good with go. That. I'm going to keep backing up. I'm not happy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, I think that like Fergus is like trying to make their way away from the person. Okay. But like towards the direction we were going. Like yeah. yeah, she's not cutting off your path. Okay. She's by the yeah. riverbank. Yeah, you could you could easily make like a good ten foot berth around her. Okay, so she's a freaky plant woman. Maybe let's not get involved with this. Yeah, she doesn't talk no. person. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're all yeah. able to walk away just fine. Okay, we'll sell away. Mm-hmm. And uh, okay. as the river curves around, you see that um, like this this area does seem to have more of those like willow esque type trees pleasant. But there's one on the road in front of you, maybe only like thirty or forty feet away, that is a weeping willow, and it leans. It grows very tall, and it leans over the entire side of the bank of this river. And the leaves are kind of like glowing, almost. It looks like, and as you get closer, you can see that like. 
what looked like before, like maybe this sort of like pinkish orange twilighty glow was actually silver tipped leaves that are reflecting the light in the sky. Um, kind of giving this sort of like ethereal glow to the tree, but it's just like the reflection of the light. If you don't make any attempt to stop or anything, then you just walk under the cascading branches and um, they kind of like, as willow trees do, they kind of like part as you're walking through them and you see that there's some like like little shiny, almost like fireflies inside the kind of darker oh. canopy that you're in currently. And the the width that the tree covers is probably about 25 feet or so from like one side of hanging branches to the other. And it just like creates almost like this little sanctum around the path. Uh, and as you're passing through, you hear a low, slow voice um, not necessarily in your heads, like there is something audible to it, but it's almost like you wouldn't understand necessarily what they were saying, except you do somehow. Hmm. Okay. And it says, why have you come to these lands, mortals? You do not belong here. It isn't safe for your kind. Uh, Frigus just kind of like looks around going like, we're here for a flower. <laughs> you have the qu queen's grace. Okay, so you also heard that voice. <laughs> <laughs> I know no bloom by that name. Well, we're here to find it. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna find it. That's why we're here. It, <laughs> it's a uh, it's. It's by the river and the trees and the other description that I was given by the lady. Okay, uh, better question. Who are we speaking to? To me. The, like, <laughs> the branches kind of like rustle a bit as it says that. And who are you? <laughs> me doesn't answer anything. She's the tree. It's the tree. <laughs> like... We don't, We're not harming you, are we? I don't know that. No, but I wonder why you would pick a flower that grows. Well, we wouldn't pick a dead flower. I mean, is there is there a dead version of it that would still... We're trying to save some <laughs> sick kids. The lady did not say it had to be a live flower, so I will... I could take back the dead one and we could see how that does, but if you also have something that cures sick kids, I'll take that too. Wait, what are they sick with? Did the old lady tell you what they were sick with? Nah. We, we just were just given her. the recipe for the cure, not the, like, we're not the doctors, we're the pharmacists. Sure. Mm. Yeah. Appeal, appeal into the, the bears on the crowd. <laughs> the doctors, not the pharmacists. <laughs> no, yeah, we're the, we're the pharmacists, not the doctor, yeah. So you venture into a land deadly for your kind to save others? This is a noble cause. You are unlike the others that come to my forest. Well, to you be may fair, I didn't, uh, didn't know how deadly it Thank was, you. but I'm just going to keep that on the down low. Doesn't seem to say anything else. All right. Thank you for letting us pass, Tree. Made it through. Man, I really don't like this place. That's <laughs> <laughs> creepy. I guess kind of as he's walking through, kind of looks up and goes like, so no help with the flower? Nope. <laughs> okay. She already said she doesn't know what that is. Uh, like she didn't, know, she didn't know she didn't know it talks. by that name, but she might know it by the description. Hmm. Like like your boyfriend knew knew it by the or by the description, not the name. Your boyfriend. Uh, excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> so as you are continuing on your path and you walk under the branches on the other side, they kind of glide over you, and there's almost like this sense of um, not like a hug or anything like that, but there's like a warmth to it, almost like gently like pushing you on your way. And there's, there's just a little bit of like a, a warm sensation that kind of like, that runs through you and you just feel like you can think more clearly than you could before and everyone gets to add plus one to your intelligence score. Ooh, wow. Like, Permanently. That's oh, exciting. What? But also I think as this happens and 
you also feel like you are extremely lucky. This 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 was a good decision to make and that you are doing a good thing. You're all going to also have one luck point and there is a small box just lying on the road in front of you.